The animation modifier can be applied to any Swift UI data binding, and it'll cause the data binding's value to be moved smoothly from its old value to its new value. This even works for things that sound like they can't be animated, like Booleans. We can all imagine uh, animating a double from one to two, right? One, 1.05, 1 1.1, 1 1.15, 1 1 and so forth up to two. But Boolean go between true and false sounds like there's no room in between values and yet it still animates. Let's demonstrate this with some code. First things first, I'll say my content view has some state to store an animation amount, var animation amount uh, of 1.0. We'll then place a vstack inside our body with a stepper title scale amount, its value bound to animation amount dot animation to animate the value smoothly in the range one through 10, then add a spacer, and then add a button saying tap me with quote marks ideally, there we go, tap me. When that's pressed, we'll add one to animation amount immediately. Then add some modifiers, padding 50, background uh, dot red, foreground color dot white, a little clip shape, clip shape of circle, and then a scale effect bound to animation amount, like that. So the stepper is gonna move animation amount in the range one through 10 with animation. Whereas pressing the button directly will add one to animation amount every single time. And so now if I press the button, it just jumps up bigger. There's no animation. But the stepper, will smoothly animate it down or up automatically. So we've now got one option, jumping to its new size immediately with a button or making a nice automatic animation change using the stepper. Now as an experiment, I'd like to change the body property just a little bit. I want to say straight away, print animation amount like that and then return vstack. So this is not a view code, right? This is just regular Swift code here. So we've got to add return to be clear what we're sending back. But adding the print animation amount is important. And to see why, run it again and try manipulating the stepper. I'll press plus here and again and then again and again. And you can see it moving between one, two, three, four, and five at the same time as the button is scaling smoothly. What's actually happening is that Swift is, Swift UI, sorry, is kind of examining the state of the button afterwards and before, and then applying the animation to get from one to two or two to three and so forth. It's filling in all the intermediate values for us, even though the actual double value of animation amount isn't moving between one, zero, five, one, 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 five, and so forth. And that's why we can animate a Boolean changing because Swift isn't somehow inventing new values between true and false, but just animating the view changes that occur as a result of that uh, Boolean change. Now, these binary animations use a similar animation modifier, not the same, but similar that we had on views. And so if you want to, you can go to town with animation types if you want to. We could say, I want animation here uh, with ease in out, Duration, we'll do one, we'll do repeat count, three auto reverses, reverses, true, like that. And run it again. So we're gonna do much more work now for every small change we make, we get this kind of effect. So it accepts the same kinds of values, not exactly the same, but same kind of values. You know, you can see very clearly, uh, Normally with animation attached to a view to get implicit animations, we have to specify which value we want to watch. We don't have to do that here because it's literally attached to the value it's working with. So we just provide the animation and nothing else. Now these binding animations effectively turn the tables on implicit animation rather than setting the animation on a view and then implicitly animating it as changes happen, we now set nothing on the view. The view does not know it's being animated. Instead, we animate it here with our 
state change. We're saying as this thing changes, update automatically. So in the former option here, the state change has no idea it'll animate the view. Because it's implicit, the view says animate me automatically, but the state change doesn't know an animation's happening. In this case, the view has no idea it'll be animated. It's a state change that's causing the animation to happen. Both work and both are important.